We thank you so much for all your blessings. In Jesus' name we pray. For a title today. Something big is coming. Something big is coming. In this first Sunday in Advent, something big is coming. So just for an introduction, anybody watch, watch the price of right? Anybody watch the price of right? 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 Everybody sitting in the audience and what what is the announcement to do? Who said, go on yeah! Yes. Yes. Come on down! We don't name this call, he said, come on down! The anticipation of wanting to come on down and you buy a ticket to price is right. You won't be able to say, I want my name called. So I can come on down. You run that out loud, looking crazy. <laughs> you don't even care at that moment. You just... Yes. Yes. Yeah, they want you to look crazy. But if you think about that phrase, come on now, that's essentially what Isaiah is saying there in that 64th chapter. He's saying, no! It gives us a picture of what we're supposed to be hoping for on this first Sunday of Advent. This Sunday of hope. Because we want the King to come on down and take care of some things. If, if you think about the, the old hymn that says, Oh, come, oh, come, Emmanuel, a ransom captured Israel that mourns in lonely exile here. Until the Son of God will appear. We're waiting for him to appear. We want him to come on down. Amen. We're waiting. See, this is what Isaiah, is, that's what his desire is. He wants. He wants God to come on down. They've been waiting and waiting. They want God to come down. And so when, when you think about when he came down, I want us to have that anticipation this Advent season. I really want God to come on down to us. Not only just come on down in the spirit, but in anticipation of that great day. Of that great day. So I ask you, what are you doing to get ready for Christmas? What are you doing? You got all your Christmas dates ready? All your CDs out? We were already playing some. Yeah, we're playing some on the way. Probably had to go to the back. Ooh, this is all kind of good stuff. Nineteen Coke and some old Quisha and all kind of stuff. <laughs> yeah, we got this. Did that you? Have you got some shopping done yet? You got your shopping in? You got just some shopping in? That's how you get ready for Christmas. You, you, you get you get your Christmas cookie list together that you're gonna cook. You you, got, you cook some Christmas cookies, this stuff. You need some. If you're baby, I'm fine. <laughs> okay, yeah, hey, uh, that's all right. I mean, you, can make you can make some mean cookies, I eat So, hey, if, if, if you got your Christmas cards ready, you, you, you got to get those ready to get them sent out. I mean, you want to get, you get your Christmas tree up? Everybody got a Christmas tree up? Nobody got it. We brought them around. I was trying to get my Christmas tree up three weeks ago, and I still have that too. That's okay. But we're going to do it today. Amen. I'm going to put my foot down. We ain't doing nothing else. We're going to make the kids get out and get this stuff up. <laughs> so these are all the things we typically think about when we get ready for Christmas. So the Christmas decorations, somebody will make it fun of me. Because I was saying back in the beginning of November, I said, yeah, I need to go ahead and get my stuff out. I need to get ready. I love Christmas. I got to get my stuff out ready. But when something big is coming, something that great is coming, it never too early to get ready.
See, Advent is a time of, of expectation, of anticipation. And when you don't have those things in your heart getting ready for Christmas, you're, you're missing what God can do for you during this season. You know, some folks want to get super spiritual about it and not worry about the rest of the stuff, but I think all of it together shows our love and compassion to the world what Christmas really can be. If we want to act super spiritual about it, but we still miss the point that we are to show the light of the world to the rest of the world. We're missing the point. We're missing the point. While we're still here, we are to be the light. While we're still here, we gotta let the light shine through us. While we're still here, and we should have that anticipation of what's coming. That's what this season is to be about. That we celebrate that Jesus came into this world 2,000 years ago. And we celebrate the fact that he's gonna come back. So the prophet Isaiah is speaking on behalf of the people here in Isaiah. He, he says, I want, I want you to come down and I want the power to come down that I want the whole world to see how awesome you are. I want your power to come down. So sometimes it, it's not that I want to change anybody's Christmas preparation. I want you to get a full understanding of what you should be thinking of. It is not just about all the fun stuff, all the all the, the, the cars and the cookies and the kicks, which I do love. But it's also about the anticipation of our Lord and Savior. Not only coming once, but he'll be coming twice. Yes. Coming back. Yes. So as we as we look at this situation, there in verse 5 and 64, there in verse 5. Let's look at verse 5 there for a second. Isaiah 64. Something important is there starting in verse 5. Says you welcome those who cheerfully do good, who follow God and ways. But, but, we are not God. We are constant sinners. So your anger is heavy upon us. How can people like us be saved? What Isaiah is doing here is assessing the situation. If we are really going to get our minds focused on really having this sense of hope, true hope. We have to clean the slate and realize that we are sinners. Confession and repentance is a part of the Advent season. For us to really get ourselves to be able to be open to what God is going to do this Advent season, we have to start afresh. And we have to start new. You have to renew yourself this Advent season today. Right now, you can't. To repent, confess and repent of the sins that you've had. It says, Isaiah realized, yes, we are sinful people. So don't have a good got nothing to be repentant. <coughs> We're all sinful people. Isaiah said, yes, let's go and let's hear all the sins that we. We have. Because see, if you kind of read the tone of chapter 64, Isaiah is kind of being a little bold in what he's saying, but I, I get the sense there in verse 5 that he kind of lowers his voice. Well, we know that uh, we know that we are not God of people. You know, we 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 have seen it. So he's kind of backing up a little bit. And that's what we need to do. We need to back it up a little bit. Say, yes, we are a sinful creature. And let us repent of our sins. See, there must be genuine confession and repentance for us to truly prepare for the coming of Christ. There, there must be this sense of spiritual renewal in your hearts and minds. Confession is the 
cleaning of the house in order for us to really seek God's mercy and be able to be filled with His Holy Spirit and be able to live out the purpose. If you're still living through your sin, it's hard to be doing and serving two masters. So as we come this year, it reminds us, and that makes you remind you every year that we are sinners. We are sinners saved by grace. I heard sometimes with the word the fact that somebody referred to um, some folks to, to the fact that they didn't think that everyone else in the church was sinning. That, that everyone in here had it all together. I said, no. Folks, we don't got it together. This is where sinners should come. I'm trying to get this one guy to come to church. He's like, I'm trying to get myself together. Man, you know, come on. <laughs> he said, I'm still trying to, you know, figure out what I'm going to do. I said, you know, everybody's a sinner, man. I'm loving you where you're at. That's right. Amen. And we don't, sometimes we don't realize, loving people where they're at means to be where they are. That you don't feel 100% comfortable with. And be in conversation. But you have to know that who is my strength? The Lord is my strength. Amen. So you can stand up in the midst of wolves. <laughs> That's right. But if we always on the other side of the room and never talk to anybody over here, it's hard to, to meet people where they are if we can't even go in there.
But you have to understand that we live on a timeline. God does not. God does not live on a timeline. We live on a timeline. He lives off the timeline, which is called eternity. So therefore, do not get hung up on time. Because what is someone saying? He's an all time God. Because he can, he can be on time whenever it needs to happen. Some folks like to get hung up. Now, I pray that you will focus on the important things to advance the kingdom, not worrying about when he's coming back. Just know he is coming back. Because that's where your hope is. And if you prepare yourself through your life each and every day, you don't worry about when he's coming back. If he comes back like the thief in the night tonight, you'll be all right. So when, when I, I, I don't know about you, but when we start to think about changing the perspective of what we do to prepare for Christmas, this kind of is, is a little bit of a paradigm shift for us, what we need to do in thinking about Christmas. Now, like I said, I love Christmas. I love the Christmas spirit. I love Christmas. CDs, I love Christmas trees, I love Christmas presents, I love Christmas. I, I love it all, I love Christmas cakes, I love Christmas cookies. I love it all, so I love it all. I love it. I love it all. I love it all. That's why I try to run sometimes. But I love it all. But we have to keep in mind that the theme of the real meaning of Christmas is the celebration of Jesus being born. And Jesus coming again. Man, man. Think about the anticipation that Isaiah had waiting for the birth. That's what they were waiting on. Please come on down. Come on down. But do we still have that same anticipation for the second coming? Because we still want to come on down for the word. He 
author that he did, and he was actually a uh, Chinese Confucius, Confucius former student. Not only Confucius, but he's a very wise Chinese scholar. So he converted to, to Christianity. And he's talking about this man that was in a pit. And Confucius walked by. And Confucius says, if you would have just listened to me, you wouldn't be in that pit. And keep walking. Buddha walks by. He says, oh my. If you come up out of there, I will help you. And keep walking. Jesus comes by. He says, oh my. Jump down in the pit. Carry the man up out of the pit. And says, whatever you need, I will take care of you. <laughs> Jesus is the one who has come down. And that 